Well, hello again, everybody. This is John Norris at Trading Perspectives. As always, we have our good friend, Sam Clement and Courtney Trust. Y'all say hello. Hey, John. How's it going? I'm doing fantastically. Thank you for asking. Now, Sam and Courtney, I got to tell you, here we are towards the end of the year, and everyone should be ho, 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 and happy, and getting ready for the holidays. And yet, guys, I'm every time I go on a website, pick up a newspaper, it seems that a lot of the headlines are about increased crime in the United States, about smash and grabs out on the left coast, and they seem to be gaining popularities, you know, from you know, back east as well. Homicide rates are up, and it just seems from wherever we go, it seems as though for whatever reason, violence is a little bit more, and crime's a little bit more. And I can't help but wonder just what does this mean for the future? What does this mean for certain areas? What does it mean for overall economic activity? I'm not sure if you guys are seeing or reading the same thing. We are. Yeah, I think it's hard not to be seeing that, especially as, as the news becomes more sensationalized and, you know, it, it sells more to put a video of someone smashing and grabbing some convenience store in, in Los Angeles or wherever. Um, and then you've seen police budgets get cut across the country and then some of those be reinstated. And it's, it's kind of hard for this to be ignored right now, I think, for anyone. Well, and to that point, I mean, L.A. specifically, are now they're – fancy stores like Louis Vuitton, all the places you shop, John, for um, your wife, of course. I don't need no looks. <laughs> <laughs> but these stores are saying that they're not opening right now because of the threat of these large, organized, you know, crimes. So, you know, if they close, will they ever open back? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't know about the higher-end luxury retailers. They could probably always just change zip codes and maybe things would improve a little bit. But when you read some of the headlines about like places like Walgreens and San Francisco, and you guys probably read this. I mean, what was it, some years ago, 19, 1914 and 2014, California passed some law saying anything under $950 and, and uh, petty crime, you know, they weren't really going to enforce it for all, for all intents and purposes. They weren't going to treat them. I mean, they, just, they were just going to let it happen. And so ever since, they, ever since that's happened, it seems as though you know, people just come in, take what they want, and walk out the door because they know that they're not going to get prosecuted. And now, unfortunately, because of that, I believe some of these people have gotten more emboldened, understanding that, you know, the, 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 store, the store people aren't going to stop them. The cops are, you know, already have enough to do. And, you know, by the time, you know, you have eight or ten people knock out, knock over a Nordstrom's or a Neiman Marcus, maybe one of them will get caught and the rest of them will vanish into the ether. And then the one that gets caught, there's not going to be the political will to prosecute. So when you have all that, you know, that sort of stuff going on. I mean, Sam, Courtney, I think I've read something like Walgreens has closed something down like ten stores. And, and the reason why they're saying it is just – Exactly that, shoplifting. And I think part of why you're seeing that like level at 950 or whatever it is level is because a lot of it is the friction that we're seeing between, you know, law enforcement and, and citizens and people. There's just a more of a friction between those. So it seems like the incentive to punish something that could cause such a high level of friction in a community is no longer there. And that's been a lot of a lot of the rights we've had over the past year and and deaths have been you know off of petty crimes or something like that so i think a lot of people um can try and put themselves in their shoes in those shoes and see okay maybe it isn't worth me you know going after someone for twenty dollars fifty dollars what have you well and you think about specifically in birmingham and the growth that we have seen in our downtown area and you know the entertainment area um, where a lot of people who live out in the suburbs are coming downtown but once you start increasing or people start experiencing petty theft and stuff like that where they're not going to trust it any longer um, and then you're going to see it go back to the way it was where businesses aren't going to be investing in revitalization of downtown areas and stuff like that because it's not safe and the businesses can only do so much in protecting you know potential customers and the thing is i and i can't stress this enough because courtney i mean i've lived here pretty much most of my life and when I remember, actually, in the 70s and 80s, you would go downtown. We still had movie theaters that were operating. You'd go downtown and, and shop, truly. And then when, when uh, 459 was built and people started really moving out to the suburbs, it wasn't necessarily the crime itself um, in the downtown area as much as the perception of crime. And, uh, you know, all you need to have happen is, you know, one or two kind of violent muggings happen over in uh, the uptown area 
or maybe on Second Avenue North, uh, and people will stop going down there, even if the crime crime rate is not that not that huge. And you know, De Blasio, the mayor of New York City, said the other day that uh, you know crime has actually gone down in New York. And strangely enough, you go and take a look at the New York City police statistics. He's not completely right. I'd give him like one Pinocchio out of four if I were at the at the Wapo. However. The numbers themselves are not as bad as what the headlines suggest they are. Yeah, it's not. Murder rates have gone up, but they're nowhere near what they were in the 1990s. And you take a look at burglary rates; those are actually down. And burglary is down. <laughs> if I, I can pronounce can it, say that word burglary. three more times. <laughs> hey, you can say anonymity a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Whatever it is, but that one right there is actually entering a building, typically in the dead of night, with the intent to commit a crime larceny or theft that's your smash and grabs yeah you know, and that, that type of stuff so larceny and th- theft if i could speak shoplifting that's actually gone up but the more violent sort of stealing crimes those seem to have been going down so de blasio is partially right however the perception now in my estimation is that new york city is not as safe a place as it was three four or five years ago these statistics be damned and as a result and I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only person feeling this way, you'll probably see a decrease in economic activity, people visiting, tourist dollars, because of the perception of crime, even if the crime rates themselves are not are not there. I think you even saw that in Seattle with uh, the, the autonomous zone, I think it was, where essentially... Very, very small section of Seattle. Yeah, but, you know, this was an area where there was essentially no rule of law going on inside of there, and businesses were her businesses collapsed and businesses left. And I think that's just a small example of what happens when the rule of law um, isn't upheld and, and, and crime is just out of hand in an area. So I think it's kind of a, it's a scary thought to picture this a kind of autonomous zone or what have you kind of expanding, not necessarily to that extent, but anytime rule of law is not upheld and enforced, I think you start to experience economic pain, especially for business owners. Oh, Sam, our, our three characteristics of any highly functioning economy, adherence to the rule of law, strong individual property rights, and the development of human capital that fits the economic needs of the society. And when you see some of these areas, and some of these areas obviously are the most dis- economically disenfranchised, or the people um, perpetuating these crimes are economically disenfranchised, otherwise we wouldn't have them. Yeah. And when you take a look at global crime rates, it's those societies and those segments, those zip codes, those area codes, those areas where you know the economy is displaced, where there seems to be no hope, that is where you see the highest prevalence of crime. And that's what's interesting is a lot of the data kind of inarguably has shown, shown the U.S. consumers at a better spot now than they were 12 months ago, two years ago, what have you. They're in a very strong spot right now. So that makes me think it's not just you know, feeling disenfranchised, but it's kind of the friction, you know, not the overall consumer, but if there's like a friction um, between the consumers that are doing well and those that aren't, or the, the citizens that are doing well and those that aren't, I think that's kind of where a lot of the issues come from. Because clearly a lot of people are doing much better, um, but still, you're still seeing a lot of these crimes taking place. You know, and I think that that's definitely something that could be a factor, but it's also, we talked about the rule of law. I mean, obviously a lot of things happened in 2020 that might have made our law enforcement more hesitant um, to enforce the law, especially, you know, in certain situations. Um, And I think that, you know, we've had two recent national Uh, court cases in which people were trying to enforce the rule of law on their own and you know there were different verdicts that came out of that but you you look at it and saying okay is that also a a reason in which we are seeing higher crime rates because law enforcement doesn't feel as um, you know supported by their communities to enforce the law. I think in some in some communities if I were a law enforcement official I'd be you know I'd be hesitant um, to go into higher crime areas or perform my duty to the, to the extreme levels that I might have previously, understanding that I might be hauled into, into a courtroom. I mean, that's, that's me individually. Now, I certainly can't speak for everyone else, let alone law enforcement officers, but you know, that, that's a tough call, and I, I think you're right. And I think it might be, might be part of it when you see the defund the police movements, when you, when you see cops being drawn, in, uh, drawn into court or brought into court. And then, then you see some spikes in, in crime rates. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Minneapolis, where the defund the police movement really kind of started, they're now back to police funding their their 
police department the way that they were previously. I mean, defund the police just kind of evaporated into thin air. Yeah, they, they agreed to give another $121 million to the police department, which restores it back to the level it was before they, they started making the cuts for the department. So clearly that wasn't working. And so, I mean, that that's and, and that doesn't work. I mean, when you don't enforce the laws that you have on the books, for whatever reason, you know, you don't enforce them, then you don't have, drum roll, a rule of law. Yeah. Right? right. Now, it's kind of shifting gears just a little bit. Courtney, the other day I asked you what you wanted for Christmas. Oh, my gosh. And you said you wanted uh, some gloves, a uh, ski mask, and a duffel bag. Um, <laughs> And, and and a sledgehammer. Now, uh-huh. what, now, what were you going to do with these items? Oh, just share the Christmas cheer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when you've been out Christmas shopping and maybe with your whole brood, uh, your volleyball team that you have at the house, <laughs> right? Um, have you felt any hesitation to go into certain areas because of perception of crime? Particularly, understand that you have, I mean, a lot of small children that you right. have to have to take care of. Um, I will say that I'm always, uh, you know, aware of my surroundings. I think that that's just like the mother hen and um, most, you know, parents is that you're watching, especially when you have children who can run away from you relatively quickly. I don't think that it has deterred me. There are certain areas um, that I would say that I have, that my husband and I have taken our children to, that he was more nervous than I was um, about the area. But I mean, I know this is this is kind of you know being funny, but the joke's on them if they steal my children. <laughs> I mean, my, our, our children are at hard ages, and I you know I'm kind of like I don't know why somebody would you know want a screaming uh, you know two and a half year old who's going to have a complete conniption, but. Um, <laughs> You know, obviously. Jokes on you. <laughs> one, less, one less mouth to feed. <laughs> but yes, I mean, I, I, I think it's more of my husband, when we have date night and we're going downtown, yes, I'm very aware of, of that. We don't necessarily bring our children downtown to the entertainment district much, but for us, I'm, I'm more aware of it. And there used to be cat police, which were police officers on bikes that were downtown, especially on the north side, which is, um, you know, more businesses and headquarters were um and i always saw them present and uh i think that that gave me a sense of security and i'm not sure if they're still around because i don't work downtown but um i mean i'd I'd say the same anecdotally i know there's areas in birmingham that i've you know always been maybe a little hesitant to go to and i i can definitely say that some of those areas i don't go to at all now it's not like okay i'll be a little more cautious it's now okay i'm not going anywhere near there and so I, I do think that perception of it has heightened at least for me well I, and I think you're the one the that's probably out late at night I mean without the obligation of children you probably stay out later than maybe John and I do I don't know <laughs> I mean you're probably going down to the entertainment districts far more so than I yeah probably yeah yeah because yeah. you know, that's not that's a very low bar <laughs> I did go <laughs> once. I did go once. <laughs> it's two drinks, dinner, and a night night, and that's <laughs> that's a big Friday night. That's a big Monday night. Big Tuesday night. Every night. So there. There, there you go. go. No, but um, but going kind of going back to it and taking a look at just overall crime rates. What what I mean, I've done a lot of work on it, and certain types of crimes are up more than others. Uh, however, you know the headlines across the country are screaming a crime wave that really maybe the stats don't completely bear out. Certain types of crimes are up more violent, kind of wanton kind of shootings and just sort of amoral sort of behavior. But in terms of burglaries and just stuff like that, there hasn't been a a massive increase in them. It's just kind of more the higher profile areas. And that same you mentioned, you know, it sells. Yeah, It's clickbait. You know, for people that want to read it, I mean, yeah, and uh, it's polarizing. It's polarizing. It's something yeah. that everyone has an opinion on. Yeah, and it's, uh, and they've used an old expression with you. I mean, plenty of times you sell more umbrellas when it's raining. Yeah, and that's right. just bad news sells. And you know, it is bad news when a group of thugs goes into a, um, a jewelry store somewhere and smashes it and takes all the stuff out. And you know, and that's and it's going to be problematic uh, for those people to get insurance when the, when their policy's up. Yeah. And so even if the, even if this particular crime doesn't um, doesn't close their business, you know, it, it's it's got 
I guess it's a little bit longer term than that. So I certainly hope that we, we get through this, and I certainly hope the perception of crime goes down because, Sam, strangely enough, Courtney, strangely enough, we've created a ton of household wealth over the last 18 months, and while it hasn't been evenly split, and I'm not saying that, that it hasn't been, generally speaking, greater societal wealth is much better than the alternative. Your thoughts, Sam? Well, I think you're absolutely right, but I think the caveat is the change in um, trends over the last five, ten years and where people can see, you know, you're right that the argument of the, the bigger the size of the pie is is the most important thing instead yeah. of how equally it's distributed. But now people can much more clearly see how it's distributed, first of all. Which yeah, just how they, they might be getting the shaft yeah. or at least the yeah. perception of getting the exactly. shaft. Exactly. I mean, even we've talked about this a thousand times, but the quotes of Jeff Bezos made $4 billion today. So, and, and that goes all the way down into social media, you know, keeping up with the Joneses, all that helps to create a sort of friction that I think maybe changes the, the whole narrative a little bit um, about total economic growth and um, economic health versus how I am doing myself compared to the people next to me. Well, I guess I, that takes us back to Courtney's contention that we should shut down social media. Sure. Didn't you yeah. say that? I don't know that I said that, but I do. I, I think it's a matter of is it resentment that, you know, and maybe that's, I don't know if that would be tied into the murder rates as well. Like just th there's more to fight over. So people are killing one another. I mean, but the fact that it's up 29% murder rates, um, you know, that is very disturbing. Mm. No argument. So, Merry Christmas, uh, you know, we <laughs> start, start talking about that. But, you know, kind of in the end, guys, I mean, it's um, I, w I really would hope at this time of year people would kind of take a step back and realize that even if you feel as though you're getting the shaft, you're really much better off in our country, you know, potentially achieving your dreams if you actually work for them. And that's a message that I don't think gets told enough. Uh, we're telling we're telling each other that we're you know that we're, we're screwing each other mm -hmm. uh, much more so than hey we're all kind of loosely in it and you know there's I don't benefit if you fail Sam. Yeah. You know I don't benefit if, if Courtney fails uh, and I don't benefit if some stranger on the street fails. There's no yeah. limit to, to the size of the pie. There I is guess. there is absolutely no limit to the size of the pie and that's what we need to be teaching as opposed to hey it's one thing I think the message that I'm getting from various media and just the news channels and all that stuff is the pie is limited. Make it seem and, like a zero-sum game. Yeah it does and it's not a zero-sum game at all. Right. And the, the more we can more that we can teach that the more you say hey get a job you can achieve your dreams if you want to do it I think the less we'll see of some of this more wanton sort of criminality that uh, that has been made the headlines. And I, I think agree. we're all guilty of looking at people who have more than us than looking at people who have less. You know, Courtney, I have I have a loving family and I enjoy my, my work. What more could what more riches could have could I could I could I have? And I think that you need to count your riches thusly as opposed yeah. to I, th I think a giant work. boat would make anybody yeah. happier right. though. As opposed to <laughs> yeah. questioning why I show up to work in a Lamborghini and, and you don't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, thank you all so much for listening. We always love to hear from you all. So if you have any comments or questions, please, by all means, let us know. You can always drop us a line at tradingperspectives at oakworth.com, or you can leave us a review on the podcast outlet of your choice. As always, if you're interested in hearing more or reading more about what we have to say or how we view the world, please go to oakworth.com and take a look, a look underneath the Thought Leadership tab for all kinds of awesome information. Guys, you all have any more thoughts on this topic? That's all I got. That's it, John. All right. That's all I've got today, too. Y'all take care.